In this lecture, we are going to build a simple NFT contract with the Open Zeppelin ERC721 standard for our hard hat project. Inside of our terminal or command line, we have to call npm install to install the package open zeppelin slash contracts. This will allow us to easily use the templates from the open zeppelin library for contracts like an NFT or a coin and more. Then we're going to create a new folder inside of our project called contracts. We're going to CD into contracts and there we'll create my contract.solidity. So to create a new file, you can use touch on Mac or you can use notepad on Windows or you could just create the file manually as well. I'm going to create my contract.solidity. All right, now you can call this contract anything you'd like. It doesn't have to be my contract. Then let's open up our project inside of our code editor and we'll get started with building out the contents of my contract dot solidity. At the top, we are going to specify the license of our file that is in a comment and we specify the SPDX license identifier as recommended by Solidity. We can use MIT license. Otherwise, we'll get a warning saying that we don't have a license specified. Next, we need to pass in the version of Solidity that this file will use. You want to make sure that this version is compatible with the version listed in Hardhat, like 0.8.10. So whatever you have listed in hardhat.config.js, you want to make sure that your version specified here is compatible with that. Next up, we are going to import open Zeppelin slash contract slash token slash ERC721, which is the folder of contract standards and templates for building an NFT token. We're just going to use the basic ERC721.solidity, but note that there are tons of templates for NFTs, and this is just the most basic one. Then we'll build a contract called My Contract. You want to have this match your file name for best practices. And again, you can call this contract whatever you'd like. This is going to inherit from ERC721, which means that my contract will be a child of the ERC721 template. That means it will inherit all the fields and functions from ERC721. We need a constructor for this child to work, which takes in a name and a symbol. This refers to the name of your NFT and the symbol for the NFT. And inside of this constructor, we can just leave it empty for now, but we do have to pass in to the parent ERC721. Feel free to use a space there. And this will take in the name and the symbol. So what this means is whenever we instantiate the my contract object, we're going to be calling this constructor, which will call the parent constructor. And that is the proper format for creating a child from an ERC721 NFT template. We can already compile this contract by going to our terminal or command line. And inside of our project folder, we're going to call npx hardhat compile. Compile is a hardhat command. You may get a message that your version of Solidity is not fully supported, which means that some features might not work correctly, but you can still use that version of Solidity. If you don't want to use this, if you don't want to see this warning, then just use the latest compatible version of Hardhat Solidity, which will be likely lower than what you want to use. All right, so then you should get this message compiling 10 files with your Solidity version and compilation finished successfully. If you see this message, it means you've been able to compile the contract. If you see something else, then look closely at the error message and search it up online if you have trouble fixing the errors. Now, once you compile the contract, you'll actually see some new folders will be created in your project. You will now have an artifacts folder and a cache folder.
Inside of Artifacts, we have Open Zeppelin, Build Info, and then your Contracts JSON data. Inside of Cache, we have Solidity Files Cache.json. Feel free to dig deeper into this, these files, but what you need to know in the basic sense is that this is created whenever you compile the contract and it is the build of the contract. You can use ABI in Artifacts if you want to interact with the contract when you build a front-end client to your decentralized app. Now that we have built and compiled our contract, we are going to build a test for the contract to make sure that it's working properly. Testing is recommended so that it's easier for you to ensure that everything is working as expected and easier for you to debug. So we'll look at how to build a very simple test coming up in the next lecture. If you liked this video, then go to training.mammothinteractive.com. We have tons more content on blockchain, web development, machine learning, and much more. We also have a membership for just $19 a month where you can get access to our 372 course bundle and counting.